Pressure switch is a pressure actuated device which open and close an electrical circuit when the pressure in the system has reached the pressure value preset on the device. Based on the working mechanism, pressure switches can be categorized into two, namely the mechanical pressure switch and the electronic pressure switch. The mechanical pressure switch works by applying the mechanical principle. The main components in a mechanical pressure switch are a piston, a spring, and the contact surfaces of the switch. When the piston on the pressure switch receives pressure from the outside, where the pressure is symbolized by the letter P, and a pressure of P compressed a piston with a piston cross sectional area of A. Then, according to the law of physics, there will be a force equal to F where the magnitude of the force F is the pressure P times the cross sectional area A. This force F compresses the piston which is held by the spring so that the piston lifts up. The raised piston separates the contact surfaces of the switch and breaks the electrical circuit. The electronic pressure switch works primarily by changing the electrical properties of the material used as a pressure sensor. Such as the electrical resistance of the materials, this is called the resistive method or the ability of materials to store the electrical energy, this is called the capacitive method, or changing the magnetic properties of the materials, this is called the electromagnetic method. Although there are other methods beside the three methods, namely optical, thermal, ionization, and light resonance methods, methods that change the electrical properties of the material are more widely used. We will explain the easiest method to understand, the resistive method using a strain gauge. Inside the electronic pressure switch by the resistive method, the spring and piston components on the mechanical pressure switch are replaced by flexible surface on which the strain gauge is attached. Strain gauge is an electrically conducting material that has special characteristics. When the strain gauge receives a tensile load, its shape becomes longer and its cross-sectional area decreases. According to the strain gauge resistance formula, if the strain gauge becomes longer and the cross-sectional area decrease, then the electrical resistance will increase. When the strain gauge receives a compressive load, its shape becomes shorter and its cross-sectional area increases. According to the strain gauge resistance formula, if the strain gauge becomes shorter and the cross-sectional area increase, then the electrical resistance will decrease. The change in electrical resistance is converted into an electric disconnect switch mechanism. In order to function properly, there are several specifications that need to be considered on a pressure switch. The first is the operating voltage. Match the type and value of the voltage on the pressure switch with the voltage used on the cable. The second is the operating current. Make sure the operating current specifications on the pressure switch is able to handle the current flowing in the cable. The third is set point pressure, that is the pressure at which the pressure switch will be activated. In most pressure switches, the set point pressure can be slightly changed within a certain range. Inside the pressure switch, there is a screw to adjust the pressure set point. On the right is the output signal chart of the pressure switch with a set point of 100 psi. We can see from the chart that the pressure switch signal is on if the pressure is above 100 psi. To change the set point pressure, turn the regulating screw until it reaches a new set point pressure.
The new set point pressure is 80 psi. We can see the change of the output signal chart against the pressure. The pressure switch signal is on if the pressure is above 80 psi. Apart from the three main specifications namely operating voltage, operating current and pressure set point, the pressure switch state is the other factor that need to be determined. There are two types of the pressure switch state. The first is normally open or NO. Normally open is the state of the pressure switch that is disconnected when the pressure switch is unpressurized. The pressure switch is still disconnected if it is given a pressure lower than the set point pressure. The pressure switch will be connected if only the pressure given reaches or above the pressure set point. On the right is a chart of the pressure switch signal against the pressure with a set point pressure of 100 bar. The second is normally close or NC. Normally close is the state of the pressure switch that is connected when the pressure switch is unpressurized. The pressure switch is still connected if it is given a pressure lower than the set point pressure. The pressure switch will be disconnected if only the pressure given reaches or above the pressure set point. Below the normally open signal chart is the normally close signal chart. Normally close and normally open signal outputs are opposite to each other's. Setting the state of the pressure switch is done by connecting certain terminals. Generally, pressure switches have three terminals that can be made into two pairs of wires. One pair for normally open signal output, and the other pair for the normally closed signal output. Pressure switch that only have two terminals. The state of the pressure switch has been determined whether it is normally open or normally close only. In industry, you often found an equipment or instrumentation driven by compressed air. For the example are pneumatic cylinder and air-operated valve. In everyday life, you also see on the dashboard of your car, there is an engine oil pressure indicator light which if it lights up then your car needs to go to a car repair shop to be repaired. All components driven by compressed air in the pressure warning light can work properly because of a device called a pressure switch. Thank you for watching my video. If you don't mind, click like and subscribe.